the new and completely absurd recommendations for statins. Do you even science, bro? This week, the pharmaceutical industry, um, I mean a panel of heart experts, released the first new guidelines regarding statin drug use in over a decade. Despite the fact that pretty much everyone who takes them doesn't actually need them, the current guidelines have nearly 33 million Americans taking statin drugs. That's roughly the total population of Florida and Illinois combined, or the amount of people who follow Justin Bieber on Twitter. No, sorry, I'm wrong. More people follow Justin Bieber. But not for long. Under the new guidelines, the amount of people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs would more than double with about 70 million Americans meeting the new criteria. Take that, Bieber. Previously, statins were recommended for anyone whose total cholesterol was over 200 or whose LDL cholesterol, you know the boogeyman cholesterol, was over 100. These new recommendations throw the old guidelines out the window and now take into consideration other risk factors. For instance, folks who have type 2 diabetes should absolutely be taking statin drugs, except for the fact that just last year the FDA required new warning labels on statin drugs. Among them, the fact that they can increase your risk of, wait for it, type 2 diabetes. Other statin side effects include a couple of degenerative muscle diseases, liver damage, serious hormonal imbalances, loss of cognitive functions, a life-threatening kidney disease, and some other stuff that will help you die. The new guidelines suggest using specific risk factors to determine who should be treated with cholesterol-lowering drugs. They include an in-depth and incredibly comprehensive list of four questions. Four. Apparently, the first of the four questions is, are you human? Yes? Boom. Statin, bitch. Of course, even the old guidelines were completely insane because the only people who have been shown to benefit from taking statins were older men who already had heart disease. The only other group who could benefit from it are people who have a very rare genetic disease called familial hypercholesterolemia. End of list. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? How is it that these already flawed guidelines are being expanded to include 100% more people? Well, that's easy. Half of the people who wrote the new guidelines have financial ties to pharmaceutical companies that make the cholesterol-lowering pills. In fact, Dr. George Mensa of the American Heart Association, you know, one of the experts, was quoted as saying, it's practically impossible to find a large group of outside experts in the field who have no relationship to industry. So, what's going on here? But, but wait, the panel leaders promised that no one with industry connections was allowed to actually vote on the recommendations. Oh, okay, that's fine then. So they all got together, wrote the recommendations, and the people who had financial interest just, you know, stood in the corners while the others voted. Okay, we'll just be over here while you guys, you know, vote. Okay, cool. Hey, Phil, play 18 later. Sorry, I won't interrupt. <coughs> Collusion, sorry. Carry on. For more truth on statins, check out the movie Statin Nation. The link is below. And head over to wellnesspunks.com and chime in. Let me know what you think of these new guidelines.